Well, without much further ado, please allow me, please on welcome uh, my friend, uh, um, uh, Pastor Lucy. She, we, I call her Apostle Lucy. She's got an apostolic grace. She is our apostle in our, in our, in our network. And uh, since when we were very, very young, back in the day, uh, we're preaching together with Pastor Lucy, Pastor Titus, and, uh, and these other guys you've met and others you've not met. And I still look back and I say, God, you've been faithful. And, uh, and I'm so happy that she could be with us this morning. Please allow her, please, to minister to us. Thank you so much, Pastor Lucy. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope you can all hear me. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. It's good to see all of you. Thank you, Pastor Newton and the rest of the leadership and all of you for allowing me to be part of this morning um, meeting of fellowship. I'm just glad to be here. And you know, the scripture says in John 1, 4, that in him was life and that life was the light of men. And we thank God that we can enjoy the light of God. Why? Because in us, there is the life of God. Because the same life that was in Jesus Christ and is the same life in us. And the scripture says in him was life. And that life was the light of man. And I'm just going to share with us uh, as brief as I can be. I can promise but as brief as I can be on what you have been pursuing for um, for few a couple of weeks, uh, still on the issue of spiritual warfare. But I want to be talking about spiritual battle, you know, spiritual battle. And um, when we read Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse four, the scripture says, "The weapons of our warfare are not carnal." but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Um, I just want to read that one again. The weapons of our warfare are not canon, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. And uh, when the scripture says um, the, weapons of, um, the weapons of our warfare, I want us to know that uh, there is war that we are supposed to get involved in. That's why the scripture says um, the weapons of our warfare. That means there is a war that me and you are supposed to fight in this life and in our walk with God. And uh, just to understand this better, when we look back, when we think about uh, Actually, the historical battles, we all know, because is each nation or continent in one way or another was involved in some battles. And therefore, those historical battles were for controlling territories but, or an economic power. But I want us to know the battle or the warfare that we are talking about is battle for control over people's souls. Because we have two kingdoms, only two, not three, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness, and both of them are at war. I want us to know that both of them are at war. Why? Because the devil works every day to undermine what God is doing in your life and in my life, what God is doing through me and through you, the devil works day and night to undermine that. But, and the scripture says in Colossians 1, uh, verse 16, that uh, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and things on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, you know, or Things were created by him and for him. And I want us to know that each one of us, uh, God has created each one of us for himself, for his purpose. I mean, we need to swallow our pride every now and then to know that we cannot live for ourselves. We live for God 
He has created us for himself. And it is true that God has a great plan for me and you, each one of us. But doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that the devil doesn't also have a plan. The devil has a plan also for you, but his plan is not for good. And what he does every now and then is to bring um, distraction in one way or another. And this distraction targets your destiny, targets who you are supposed to be in God, targets what God has called you to become. And, you know, the scripture says, um, my people perish for lack of knowledge. That is Isaiah, uh, Hosea chapter four, sorry, Hosea chapter four, verse one. My people perish for lack of knowledge. And as we discuss and we look into this issue of, um, of spiritual warfare or battle, it's good to know that um, we need to obtain um, knowledge. You know, we need knowledge because we, we are in ignorance. That means we do not know that we are in a battle. And if we do not know that we are in a battle, then we are not alert because everyone in a battle is always alert. Now, the spirit, the battle that we are in is a spiritual battle. So we need to be alert spiritually. Our spiritual antenna needs to be up. Our spiritual senses needs to be up because we are in a battle. And, um, you know, one of the ways that we get ignorant, where the scripture says, my people perish for lack of knowledge, is not to be aware that, um, is not to be aware that God has a plan and not to be aware that we have power and authority and also not to be aware that God has given us tools to be able, he has equipped us for this battle because I began by saying we need to know there's a war that we have to fight and we are equipped for that war because it may not have come. You may not have faced it yet. Maybe we are in, you are in the middle of it, but if it has not come, it will eventually come. If you are in it, you are in it. We need to know that, uh, that we have power and authority to overcome that which we are in because in this war, we are already equipped. But, you know, when we are in, in ignorance, um, we don't know that the enemy is out to distract us. And therefore, I came to encourage you and, um, and myself also, because we are all of us in a battle. We are all of us in a war. Um, we need to be aware and being aware is that we need to come to the knowledge of truth. There is some truth that we need to know. You know, there is a truth that we need to come to if we have to fight this battle and be victorious. And therefore, it's important one to recognize the battles that we get into as Christians are always spiritual battles. We will be wrong. And we will lose the battles if we fight these battles carnally. And I would, you know, just letting you know that it's a spiritual battle. And spiritual battles are fought differently. They are fought spiritually. And for example, when we read um, Second Chronicles 20, 15, you know, Jehoshaphat was being told by a prophet that the battle belongs to the Lord. The battle is not his. The battle belongs to the Lord. And when we are in whatever kind of a battle, it's important to know that it is never our battle. So we need to be fighting from a place of victory. Every time we get into a battle, maybe, and you know, some of the battles look like um, minute, look like they are just physical battles. And we, Every believer, any born again Christian needs to know that we are spiritual beings and our approach to issues is spiritual. And therefore our fight needs to be spiritual. 
And when we need to, we need to sharpen our spiritual weapons to fight a spiritual battle. And we need to be found ready because we don't know when the war is coming. The scripture says our battle, you know, our warfare is not carnal. We don't know when it is going to come. We don't know how it will come. All what we need to know is, is spiritual and therefore we need to be alert, you know. All our spiritual senses need to be alert to be able to design this battle that I am in is a spiritual battle. We tend to look at the people because sometimes there are people who can be in the equation. But I want us to know, even from the beginning, when God created um, us and says we take dominion, he didn't say we, domi we dominate each other. We are not supposed to dominate each other, you know? We are supposed to take dominion. And the scripture talks about what we are supposed to take uh, dominion, what we are supposed to rule over, not each other. And if we are ignorant of that, then even in our battles, we are going to fight each other. We are supposed to see the enemy, the devil, not the people. They may come into the equation, but they are not the enemies. The devil is the enemy. And quickly, I just want to share, as we get into prayer a bit, I want to share a few principles, kingdom principles, on how to engage in a spiritual battle. You know, how to engage in a spiritual battle. And number one, um, I want to talk about prayer. But as I talk about prayer, um, you know, the scripture says, there is a kind, Mark 9, 21 says there is a kind. What is it? There is a kind of a battle that doesn't go only by prayer, but we have to include uh, fasting. But I want us to talk ab about prayer now, you know, because always remember, it is not your battle. When you get into a battle, remember the battle does not belong to you. The battle belongs to the Lord. But I want to promise you, it will eventually come. If the battle has not come, it will come. So it's good to get ready. It's good to equip yourself with knowledge. It's good to know how do I respond to these battles. And therefore, I'm just sharing a few things. One, please strengthen your prayer life. Strengthen your prayer life. Because we just said the battle is not yours. The battle belongs to the Lord. And therefore, every time we are in a battle, we want to constantly turn to the Lord. Constantly turn to the Lord. Don't turn to that man. Don't turn to that woman who is raising a fight for you. No, turn to the Lord because the battle is not yours. The battle is of the Lord. And when I talk about prayer, brethren, I'm saying the scripture says, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. We are living in a generation or at a time when we pray only when there are issues. You know, when we pray when there are issues, that prayer doesn't help. The prayer that helps is that prayer we pray in season and out of season. When there are issues and when there are no issues, we are constantly in prayer. That is one way of approaching a battle or winning a battle because you are not, you are not praying because there is a battle. Already you are ready, you, you, you are ready, it can't pin you down. I mean, you are sad because you are praying in season and out of season. And therefore we are encouraging you that you need to get into prayer. Why? Ezekiel, it's the scripture says, Ezekiel um, chapter 21, verse 27 says, I will overturn, overturn, um, I will overturn it. It shall no more, be no more until, um, it shall be no more until, um, let me read it um, from a different, version of scripture give me a bit a few minutes I get it from a different version yes 
Ezekiel 21, verse 27, the scripture says, scripture says, good. The scripture says, Um, okay, I had got somebody uh, removed the page, but it's still there. Overthrown, overthrown. I will make it overthrown. It shall be no longer until he comes whose right it is. And I will give it to him. You know, um, when we talk about spiritual warfare, it's a battle. It's like, it's like, um, it's like um, because I say this battle is for human, people's souls. There are things from the onset that belong to us, the promises of God. I mean, our inheritance in Christ. And when um, we are fighting because the enemy wants to distract us, the enemy wants to rob us what belongs to us. Is robbing us of our peace. Is robbing us of our families. Is robbing us of our sound mind. Is robbing us of things that the Lord has given to us. But I want us to know it is in prayer where we overthrow. It is in prayer where we overthrow. That's why the scripture says overthrown. Another version says overturn, overturn. I will make it overturned. You know, we have to make things we have to overturn things in prayer. What you have to overturn your destiny and contend for it until it is overturned. Where the enemy had put it, whatever bless the enemy, whatever dust be, the enemy had thrown your destiny. You have to overturn it in prayer. When things are looking so bad for your family, you need to overturn. That's why the scripture says overthrown overthrown. I, I will make it overthrown. It shall be no longer until he comes whose right it is. I want you to know that you have a right for a, you have a right for, of, for, of a, a sound mind. You have a right, you know, of a prosperity, whatever that means. You have a right, you know, of a stable family. You have a right of a wealth and, and good health. It is your right. And the enemy wants to touch those things to distract you, that you cannot concentrate or become what the Lord has called you to become. And it is in the place of prayer that you overturn. What, whatever he has done, we overthrow. We overthrow him. We get him out. We smoke him out of all our lives, our inheritance, our promises our possession and therefore I want to encourage you to hold into prayer get to know the art of prayer get to know, know how to pray skillfully know how to pray targeted prayers because uh, warfare prayers are targeted are strategic you have to hit it's like cooking you know it's like cooking the gun it's pulling the trick until you know you have a target and then you overturn, overturn until it comes back to you. Overturn things that the enemy has, uh, you know, overthrow him, overthrow, overturn until the things that belong to your children come back to your children. Overthrow things that were supposed to be yours. They come back to yours. It doesn't matter how far you have sunk. I am telling you, the Lord has your back. You need to overthrow. And we do that in the place of prayer. Because I say, it, the scripture says this kind. That, you know, the, the, the disciples went complaining to Jesus how things were not working. And they were told there is a kind. You know, there is a kind that does not go by prayer, that cannot go except by prayer and fasting. And because I've talked about prayer, I want to tell you another weapon. You know, there is no deliverance uh, without colonizing your body. You've got to colonize your body. I'm not talking about fasting shoes or fasting that movie or fasting people. No, I am talking about fasting food 
going without food. We've got to colonize our bodies. We have to make sure we weaken our bodies so that the spirit can be alert. Because when the spirit is alert, I mean, a strong spirit is able to smoke out the demons wherever they are. And therefore, prayer has to be to go together with fasting. And I encourage the church of today, if we eat 24 seven, we are going to lose battles that we are not supposed to lose because there are battles that do not go alone by prayer alone. We have to add fasting, you know? You know, um, I am I'm remembering of a scripture. Um, I'm remembering a scripture in Obadiah, uh, chapter one, verse 17 says on Mount Zion, you know, there shall be delif there shall be um, on Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance, holiness. Yeah, there shall be deliverance, there shall be holiness, and uh, the house of Jacob shall possess uh, their possession, right? There are things that we will never possess if we don't raise a fight, I'm telling you because um, we have been given authority. When we talk about spiritual warfare, I'm telling you, it's because we are equipped. We have power, we have authority, we have the word, we, have, we are equipped to fight this battle. And so the other, I've just talked about prayer and I've talked about fasting quickly. The other principle I want to bring in that we need to know how to use you know, those are our weapons. We need to know how to engage them. We need to know how to engage prayer. And I said prayer is not just prayer. You know, prayer, we need to understand the art of prayer. Pray strategic prayers. It's like releasing a bullet that is going to target something, you know. And then we need to go through fasting, you know, fasting. Uh, fasting we have, because it's a spiritual battle, We've got to colonize our bodies. We don't colonize our bodies when we fast movies or you fast that fair pair of shoes or you fast, I'm talking about fasting food, going without food, you know, so that your spirit will be alert, right? Then after that, we need to be people of the word. Um, only a God can kill another God. This battle we are talking about, spiritual warfare is spirit to spirit, fire for fire. So when we talk about the word of God, the scripture says, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. Um, I would have read um, verse 4. I would have read 2, but let's just, let me just begin from 4. Who wants you know, who wants everyone saved and after that to come to the knowledge of truth. We are saying, in other words, God wants everyone born again. Me and you are born, are born again. But after that, after giving our life to Jesus, there's something else that he wants. After that, come to the knowledge of truth. I want you to know, um, when we talk about knowledge, yeah, when we say somebody is knowledgeable, it's just because they seem to be better than others. There are things that they know that others don't know. Now, when we only get saved and stay there, you know, there is some knowledge that we don't get into. And I'm telling you, the scripture, we read a scripture in Hosea 4, Hosea 4, verse 1, that my people perish for lack of knowledge. So God insisting that we need to be knowledgeable. There are secrets that we need to master so that we are able to fight, right? I mean, so the scripture says that everybody, it is God's will that we all get saved. But after that, come to the knowledge of his will. What am I saying? I am saying there is a knowing that we need to come to. And that's why 
it's a knowledge of the truth. And the truth that we are talking about is um, the word of God. And the scripture says that we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. Some of the, some of the warfare and struggles that we go through or we are going through, there are truth away. It's just a truth that we have not discovered. And the moment we get that truth, our deliverance will come forth. We will win the battle. I mean, the battle will be over, over and we shall be comforted. So if we want to fight these battles of life and win, we need the word of God. That's why I said it's a spiritual battle and therefore it's spirit to spirit. So we have, if we have to fight spiritually, we need the word, which is the spirit, which is the truth. And this truth will set us free. So the scripture says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. That means if we, are in, if we, if we entertain ignorance and especially ignorance of the word of God, we remain in bondage. I mean, we, the, we can remain in trouble. We can be oppressed by the devil. We, he can mock, he can make a mock of us. I mean, he can spit on us. Why? Because he's riding on our ignorance. So we need to go back to the word of God. This is the word of truth. If just to, when we know the truth, full truth, because half truth is as good as no truth. We need the whole counsel. And when we have it, then we will be free. So I am telling you that the troubles, some of the troubles that we are in is because they are just a truth away. So we need to trust God for a truth, for the secret. There is a secret that we need to know. We need to trust God to know where the code is so that we are able to decode the thing and get in, you know, and overturn. And then, so the word, embrace the word. Then the other principle is holiness, holiness. You know, the scripture says, um, whatsoever, uh, whatsoever, um, what, whatsoever has broken, what, what, whatsoever has broken the edge, a serpent can bite. Whoever, you know, it doesn't matter who. And I just want to say something here when we talk about holiness. God hates sin. The devil loves sin. And I told some other people, I think the day before yesterday, the Bible doesn't talk about weakness. It talks about sin. And therefore I am talking about sin. We need to address the matter of sin if we have to win any spiritual battle. Holiness without which, you know, we cannot see God. Without holiness, we cannot see God. And I don't want us to assume we cannot see God in heaven. It is here and now. Because we serve a God who hates sin. And therefore, when they sin in our lives, I mean, the devil, we give the devil a legal ground to oppress us. We give, you know, we, we give room for the enemy to come because he's attracted by sin. And therefore, we need if we have to win the battles of life, spiritual warfare, spiritual battles, we need to walk in holiness, holiness. Because we said, uh, you know, what, whoever broke, breaketh an edge, where the edge is broken, the serpent will definitely bite. So we have to make sure that uh, we don't give room for the serpent, that is the enemy, to attack us. And that is the work of holiness, holiness. And finally, uh, let's engage and, and, um, and uh, deliberately develop a relationship with God. Deliberately. We need to make a deliberate decision because 
The battle is his. The battle does not belong to me. I'm fighting from a place of victory. And if the Lord has to back me up in this one, I have to be in relationship with him. You know, Mark chapter 3, verse 14, Jesus called them. The scripture says he called them, who? The disciples. For what? That they may be with him. And after that, he sent them. Our first calling is to be with Jesus, is to be with him. That is, that is our first calling. God uh, wants us to be with him first. We tend to go first. That's why I think we lose some battles because he wants us to be with him. For what? That we may know his mind. We may know his heart. We may know his, you know, we may understand his, his voice, his, you know, his um, heartbeat. He would want us to, to, to understand him, to be like him, and then we can go. So that when the enemy sees us, he sees him. You know, when the enemy looks at you, he sees Jesus. I am telling you, I want you to know that the reason why we have to be so close to Jesus is because our righteousness cannot stand before, before God. You know, our own righteousness can never stand before God. That's why we clothe ourselves with Christ. Christ, our righteousness. So that when we stand before God, he does not see me, he does not see you. He sees Jesus. And when he sees Jesus, he can identify with him. So we need to get close. Let's have a relationship. Let's make it a lifestyle that I have, I have a goal to develop my relationship with Jesus. This is a personal walk. This is a personal walk. It's a deliberate walk. It's a decision that we make that I have to build this relationship with Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ, I want you to know, um, um, when we build a relationship with Jesus and we become friends of Jesus, we become like a people that we see in the scriptures. One of them is Abraham. Abraham was a friend of God. That's why he was a solution provider together with God. And the moment we stick into a relationship, a deep relationship with God, we be, with Jesus, we become solution providers together with him. I mean, that's why we can pray for people. That's why we can deliver people. That's why we can give direction uh, to people. Why are we coming from? We are coming from a relationship with the Lord. So, um, so warfare, battles will be difficult to win, to overcome if there is no relationship. Let's have a stable relationship with Jesus Christ. And then finally, before we pray, I just want to let you know that uh, all said and done, the devil can never come closer than you have allowed him. It's just important to know that the devil can never come closer than you have allowed him. And that's why we do all the principles that I've shared from the others that it doesn't, we don't permit him at all. And one, um, he's not as strong as we have assumed. Yeah, he's actually supposed to be under our feet. Number, and, 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 and the other thing that I would want to add is the devil can only be in one place at a time. If he's, if he's in Africa, he's not in Australia. It's good to know that. Just to show you how powerful you are, how powerful we are, that uh, is just because of some ignorance. You know, I don't want to say carelessness because it may, because of different difference in cultures, but just because we do not know, all of us, and we are learning, and there's grace, you know, and the Holy Spirit, the greatest teacher, is there with us. Is good to know that 
um, we are supposed to win. We are expected to win every battle because we have an advantage over the devil because he can only be in one place. I mean, he can only be in Africa or be in Australia or be in China. Now, the ones that he, the, 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 the ones that disturb us are the agents, you know, um, the evil spirits. Those are, but they are small boys, those ones, compared to the power, you know, and authority that God has given you. And I am encouraging you today. Today, today, you can rescue your destiny. You can rescue the destiny of your children. You can rescue the destiny of your family. You can rescue yourself from that which the enemy has sneaked into your life. You can rescue yourself from that depression. You can rescue yourself from that confusion. You can rescue yourself, you know, from that instability, you know, just by arising and putting things in place and know that you have power, you know, you have authority. I mean, you are anointed. You can smoke the enemy from wherever. You can smoke the demons from wherever. But we need to know, I want to repeat, you need to know prayer is key. And I'm saying um, it's not that prayer um, that we wake up and because there's a problem, we are praying. No, we need to make prayer a lifestyle, you know, a lifestyle. And we need to understand, to, to, to get skill, you know, warfare. People go to train um, the military guys trained for a long time. They are preparing a war that they don't know it will come or not come. And if you go to the barracks, I will, I, I've never been there. Somebody told me they even sleep in, on their shoes because they are ready for battle. And you as a Christian, you need to be ready for battle. That I can attack anytime, you know, that I can attack anytime, that the enemy, you know, he, he, I mean, I cannot be overpowered. That's why we pray in season and out of season. And then I say it, we also need to get the word, have the word on your fingertips because this is a spiritual battle. And it, we are saying it is spirit to spirit and only a God can kill another God. And this is a battle of gods. And therefore, when you have the word of God, it's a weapon. You release that weapon. I mean, the word of God is, um, is everything. You need to have the word of God ready so that, because we don't fight otherwise. We fight by the word of God. We speak the word of God to that situation. We speak what the word says into that situation. And the word of God is powerful, sharper than any double-edged sword. Then holiness. God, I say, hates sin. Just summarizing what I have just said, hates sin and the devil loves sin. And therefore, when there is sin in life, you can fight a losing battle. We need to know that we need to take care of sin. Every other time, we need to tell God to help us. There is grace that teaches us to say no to all ungodliness. So we need to take care of sin. And I say in Mount Zion, the scripture says, there is deliverance. If we want victory, I want you to know, yes, there is deliverance. It is there for you. There is victory for you. But there is also holiness. Okay? There is also holiness. And we don't get to our possession without holiness. That's why the scripture says there is deliverance, you know, and there is holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. So we cannot possess our possession. We can fight. We can do everything. We can release prayers. We can, uh, we can speak the promises of God. But there's something missing here. The scripture says, yes, there is deliverance. There is holiness. And after that, the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Then I also talked about our relationship with God. It's need to be intact. It's need to be or whether every other time we are relating with Jesus. And how do we relate with him? Being there for him. I mean, Moses was told by God, come up unto the mount 
and be there. There. We need to be there that we can listen to him. We can get direction from him. We can know what to do for him because when we do things coming from him, we, he backs us up. When we go alone, then we do not know what to do. There will be confusion. So a close relationship, a walk with God, a walk with Jesus, being there. This is developed over a time. It is continuous process. We have to build it all through. We build it, sometimes it looks like we are losing it and there is grace to continue. Why? Because this is where we come from. This is the place where we'll know his heartbeat. This is the place where we'll be instructed by him. This is the place where we know the secret. This is the place we know his mind. This is the place we know his thoughts. This is the place that we become like him. And you know, this is the place where he sends us because we can't send ourselves. We can't go by ourselves because the scripture says without him, we can do nothing. Therefore, this relationship is very key. And finally, I just want to, um, just to pray with us, just uh, pray with us. And I, I know uh, as we talk about uh, battles, um, I want to speak comfort, you know, to them that have gone through battles and especially the battle of the mind, the battle of the mind. It's like battle of mind um, blogging. It's like confusion. Um, I want to, to just speak comfort to you because the scripture says, speak comfort to Jerusalem for her warfare has ended. I want to bring an end in the name of Jesus, that warfare that you have been going through and speak comfort to you this morning. I am speaking comfort to you um, and speaking restoration of your mind and uh, putting an end to that manner of confusion. Why? Because the scripture says, our soul, your, our soul is our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fall. The snare is broken and we have escaped. So I want you to know that the snare is broken and you have escaped like a bird. I mean the snare, that snare is broken. It is no longer there because you have trusted God. And we talk about this warfare. I want you to begin in a new slate, knowing that the snare, um, the snare is broken and you have escaped. And I am more on the people. Maybe you have them or you know them. I am aware of the people that are in confusion, kind of mind blogging. You know, the, the minds are, it's like you feel like your mind is blocked and there is depression, and there is um, you know, confusion in your life, in your mind. Those are the people I am addressing to, because the Lord is saying um, that uh, my people, you know, it's like my people, I am going to open up the graves. That means I am going to open up where you are caught up. I am going to open up the graves. I am going to bring you out from, I mean, I'm going to bring you out from wherever the enemy has tied you and I've put you for a long time. Uh, the Lord is saying, I am going to bring you out of that. I want you to believe the word of the Lord. As we pray this morning, just believe that word. And know that the graves are open. And even you who have an issue, I want you to know that the graves are open. The Lord has opened the graves and he has brought you. He has brought your career. He has brought your, your destiny. He has brought that which looks like uh, you could not touch. He has brought it out. And he has settled you where you are supposed to be. Why? Because it is a time of, a, of overturning. It's a time of overthrowing. It's a time of giving it back to you. Whatever you thought you lost, 
you are given back. It's given back to you. And I want you to hold on and trust the Lord. He has equipped you for this battle. You are fighting a battle that you already won and God has never lost any battle. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bless your name and we worship you. We give you all the glory. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, for the freedom that you have brought us into this morning. Lord God Almighty, according to your word, I speak comfort to your people. I speak comfort to your people because the warfare is ended. Lord God Almighty, thank you because their souls and our souls have escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fall. The snare is broken and we have escaped this day in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord God Almighty, thank you because you have opened the grave and you have brought us out, O oh Lord, out of every confusion, out of every, uh, every depression, out of every stagnation. Lord God Almighty, you have brought us out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord God Almighty, in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak restoration of the wisdom. I speak restoration of the virtues that your children have lost in the battles that they have gone through. Lord God Almighty, I pray that their wealth, their health, their wisdom, their revelation, oh God, their dominion and authority has been restored in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise and we give you honor because it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Oh, well, my God. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Well, what a word. My God, what a word. Praise God. We receive it. We receive it. Come on, give him praise. Give God a club offering. Oh, Rasta, ba, 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 ba. Yada, ba, ba, ba. what a word, what a word tonight. My God, my God, the word for season, this one. May you receive it, receive it, receive it. Oh, my goodness. I've been writing notes and notes and notes. Ignorance, where? Well. <laughs> Holiness, colonize your body. I've written so much. Thank you so much, Pastor Lucy, for pouring your heart and just imparting so much grace. I just sent something. I, there's a story. Some of you are already, you feel like, my goodness, I'm fasting today. You're supposed to go eat breakfast now. You're saying, I'm canceling that breakfast. I'm going to colonize my body now. I'm starting now. <laughs> Look at them smiling. I can read your mind. See? Some of you are saying, I'll start today. I'll colonize this body. I tell you, so practical, so powerful, so clear, with so much clarity. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Chains are breaking even now. Some of you, is just ignorance. It's just ignorance. Your breakthrough is just one truth away. Uh, Satan, if he's in Africa, he cannot be a small boys. I love it. I love it. Pastor Lucy, we really honor you. And uh, I just want to say thank you to you for just staying up this late and ministering to us.